Hi, welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to do another path analysis exercise and learn more about M+. Let's look at this model in this diagram. We have five measured variables. Two of them are exogenous variables. They are exercise and hardness. The other three can all be considered as endogenous variables. They include fitness, stress, and illness. Because there are five variables, there are five times six divided by two, which is 15 unique variance and covariance elements in the matrix. So to decide whether this model is identifiable, we need to count the number of parameters to be estimated. First, there are two variances for the exogenous variables and three error variances for the three endogenous variables and one covariance between the two exogenous variables, which makes a total of six by now. Now let's count the number of structural relationships. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plus six, a total of 15 parameters for estimation. Because the number of unique variance and covariances in the matrix is the same as the number of unknown parameters, we have a just identified model. Just a quick clarification, the reason I have both um, solid lines and dashed lines in this diagram is because later on I am going to modify this model for another exercise. For now, you just consider all the lines the same. Can you tell me that how many structural equations you need to write for this model? Yes, the answer is three because we have three endogenous variables. You write one structural equation for each endogenous variable. On this slide, I have the descriptive information of the data set. You can see here is the correlation matrix along with the standard deviations of the five variables. This information is sufficient for us to create a summary data set in M+. Since I have already created the data file, right now I just need to open it. So once you get into M+, you can do File, Open, or you can simply click on this Open Folder icon. And here we have a list of files. While all of them are input files, I do not see any data files because I remember I label them as .dat files. What you need to do is change here the input files to all files. Now you can see the data files. It's interesting that Amplus label all the data files as a storm and the sanitary analysis data file. But that's okay. We know that the data file, you see that little DAT there. And here is the data file I created based on the summary information. I can open it. Just double check. I have the five standard deviations along with the correlation matrix. Once the data file is ready, you can start writing your command file. We start the command file with the data block. First, we need to provide the name of the data file. Because it's a summary data set, you need to specify the type is standard deviations along with the correlation matrix. Number of observations are 373. In the second block, variables, we provide the name of the variables 
and make sure they are in the same order that you created your data set. And we are going to use all five variables in our analysis. So use variables are all. In the third block, the analysis, type is general, estimator is maximum likelihood. Both are using the default values. In the model block, you specify your structural relationships. Remember, we have three endogenous variables, so we need to write three structural equations. And we have three lines here, one for each structural equation. You start with the endogenous variable, then the keyword on, then followed by the exogenous variable that has direct impact on that particular endogenous variable. Let's take another look at this diagram. There are two exogenous variables that impact fitness directly. There are three exogenous variables that have direct impact on stress. And all four variables directly impact illness. So based on this type of structure, we're going to write our equations as we see here in this model block. You can see stress on three exogenous variables, illness on all four exogenous variables. Remember the keyword on is to specify a structural relationship between a endogenous and exogenous variables. In the output block, we request for sample statistics, standardized solutions, along with modification indices. Remember to click this little disk icon to save your command file before you click this button to run your analysis. You can name the file whatever way that makes sense to you. I call it M plus week four exercise one. So I just save. And now you can click this button to run the command. It may take a while for you to get the output file, but output file will pop up as a separate window from your command and data file. Here we have the output file. I increased the font size so we can read it better. Um, the first part is just simply a repeat of your command files. So all the way to here, that's what you put in your command file. Now, below it, we have the um, summary information. We have only one group of data that contains this many sample size. There are three dependent variables. The name are given here. Those are the endogenous variables. And two independent variables are listed here. Again, they are called exogenous variables. After the variable information, we have here estimator. We know we use maximum likelihood. The other information, we are going to talk about them later. We can now look at the sample statistics. Here you have the covariance matrix that is viewed upon the information you provided in your data file. Remember, you can convert a correlation matrix into a covariance matrix as long as you have the standard deviations of the variables. In the next section, we have the model fit indices. We're going to talk about the model fit indices in a separate video. You know we have a just identified model in this example, so we have perfect fit indices. So we are going to look at the model result. We're going to look at the values of the estimated parameters. First, we are 
given the unstandardized solutions. You can see that the path coefficient from exercise to fitness is 0.217, from hardness to fitness is 0.079. As I marked on this diagram, those are the unstandardized pass coefficient from one exogenous variable to one endogenous variable. Okay. As we specified in our model section, we have these three endogenous variables, and the exogenous variables that had direct impact on it. And you can find the unstandardized pass coefficient for each of the pairs. Now, here in the second column, those are the standard errors. Based on the ratio between the estimate and the standard error, we have the t test value. The rule of thumb is that as long as a t value is greater than two. We consider this pass as statistically significant. In a different way, you can look at the p-value. As long as p is lower than the alpha level you selected, it's statistically significant. The pass is statistically significantly different from zero. Based on the model result section here, we can see that there are one, two. Three, four structural paths that are statistically significant. The residual variances we see here are the error variances for the three endogenous variables. So you can see I mark the value for the error variances right next to them. After the unstandardized. Model results. We have the standardized results because we requested this to be part of our output. Similarly, there are estimated pass coefficients for each pair of the exogenous and endogenous variables. For example, from exercise to stress, the standardized pass coefficient is a negative point zero one four. From hardness to stress, the standardized pass coefficient is a negative point two two three. I presented the information in the same diagram. So for each path, I have the unstandardized pass coefficient. And slash, and after the slash, I have the standardized pass coefficient. You can see the two values we just looked at. One is from hardness to stress. The other one is from exercise to stress. The standardized pass coefficients are presented right after the unstandardized pass coefficients. There are also Test of significance in the standardized solution, but、um, maybe there are some inconsistency between the、um, standardized and unstandardized section. If that happens, we go with the unstandardized section. Finally, I would like to bring attention to one more thing. Remember that we said we have fifteen unknown parameters. For estimation in this model, but in the model fit information, the number three parameters is only twelve. The difference is because of the error variances for the three endogenous variables. We know the variances of the three endogenous variables from the sample statistics. We can also obtain the R square values. For the three variables, based on the model structure, you can see about sixteen percent of the variance in fitness can be explained by this model structure. So the error variance is no longer a free parameter because it is one minus the explained variance, and that is why you see the 
residual variance plus the R-square always gave you 1 in the standardized solutions.